Hey everyone, Kiwi King 77 here from the AC Syndicate team here to do a review video on the leaked uh, stock TouchWiz Jelly Bean ROM on the Galaxy S3. This is the Sprint Galaxy S3. The leaked Jelly Bean ROM is actually leaked to the T-Mobile uh, Galaxy S3, but um, good developer Min has actually ported it over to the Sprint Galaxy S3 so I can go ahead and review it on the Sprint one. Uh, pretty much everything is working. The only bugs really is uh, picture messaging is not working so you're not going to get MMS to work. Uh, I've tried to get it to work but I can't. Uh, screen orientation is also uh, messed up and you also have the browser being a little bit finicky so keep that in mind. So uh, right away some things I do want to show you. Of course, I want to show that it is on Jelly Bean, so I'm going to go ahead and go into Settings, scroll down, go to About Device, and you will see Android version 4.1.1 right there. You also see model number SGHT999. Again, that is because this leak was for the uh, SGHT999 from T-Mobile, that Galaxy S3 on T-Mobile. So again, that's why it looks like that. But anyways, quickly tap an Android version, and you will see you got Android 4.1.1 Jelly Bean. Got that nice little Easter egg. You can push some jelly beans around on that screen right there. So there you have it. That's just that little uh, little Easter egg feature. But uh, to show you uh, that the accelerometer and the screen orientation is messed up, it is upside down actually. So you'll see when I put it like this, it shows the screen upside down. And when I go like this, it shows it upside down. So that's kind of a, um, a bug where you can't really use your phone in landscape mode because it gets put upside down, which is a little bit unfortunate. Um, and also, MMS does not work. When you go into the messaging application, you'll see I was uh, sending myself some text messages, but uh, when you go into it, you will see it just sits on that loading screen. I tried sending it with Go SMS as well, and it did not work. Uh, but you see texting works fine, again, but you're just not gonna get incoming or outgoing picture messages, so keep that in mind. I mean, that's kind of a main thing to keep people away from using this, is that you can't uh, send or receive picture messages. Otherwise though, um, lock screen, uh, pretty much the same lock screen. Uh, touch anywhere, you got that ripple effect. Oops, and, but you also have a new uh, little feature down at the bottom. You have five icons instead of four, so you can add some more shortcuts down there. Of course, you can pull down the notification bar while you are locked. Uh, we do have a new notification pull down bar, so I'm gonna go ahead and pull that down now. Up at the top, you will see you do have a little bit different look to it. You have the time in the upper left hand corner and the date and the day as well. You have a settings button right in the upper right hand corner. You have some new toggles. Again, these, this could be different based on which Galaxy S3 uh, gets the update. Um, sometimes they make a little bit uh, different tweaks depending on what carrier you're on, so kind of keep that in mind. But you'll see they added driving mode right there, so you got a little bit of a, a different look to it. Again, you have the brightness up and down. You can change it how you want or you can put it on auto if you would like to as well. You can clear your notifications down at the bottom here. Of course you have the new uh, jelly bean style notification system where you can extend and preview some messages whether you get text messages, picture messages or uh, you'll also see emails right here. I get uh, some previews. I got 40 I need to respond to tonight so that's probably what I'll be doing tonight. You also see it does have Google Now. I'll get to that in a second. Uh, which is great, but yeah, so for example, if obviously since I can't show you guys MMS working because it does not work, I'm going to take a screenshot real quick, volume down and power, I believe it was, nope, not on the Galaxy S3, sorry about that, it's home button and power button at the same time, that takes the screenshot, and once it saves the screenshot, you will see, this is what an incoming MMS would look like, it would show a quick preview of the image, and you can also pinch in and minimize that uh, that image as well. So. Uh, just a little cool feature of Jelly Bean with these new notifications. Of course, you can still swipe it away to get rid of it, uh, get rid of individual ones, or hit clear to get rid of all of them. When you start to pull down the notification bar, you will see it starts to dim the screen the further down that you go. That's a little nice little neat feature. And you also see when you pull up the notification bar, it just covers the notifications. It doesn't like stop there and then push them up. It covers all of them. So that's just a little bit different visual look to it. I will link to where you can get this ROM if you would like to run it. In the description, you should be able to just uh, wipe data cache, Dalvik cache, and install the ROM. Uh, I do, again, want to give a huge shout out to uh, Min. I hope I'm saying it right, M-Y-N. Uh, awesome developer that got this ported over to the Sprint Galaxy S3. So huge shout out to him for getting it ported over. Uh, so it's uh, really great. Um, again, one thing he rec uh, recommends if you do decide to run this build is to go into settings, developer options, and then 
hit disable HW overlays. So that's one thing he does recommend, make sure that that is checked. Just one little quick thing that he recommends. Otherwise though, 3G data is gonna work. Uh, LTE should work as well. I can't test it myself, but you will see you can go to mobile networks and go into network mode and you can change it to LTE CDMA. So uh, LTE should work as well. 3G is working, I'm on Wi-Fi now. But uh, again, it does still include S-Voice. You will see that um, in your app drawer. It does include S-Voice, where is it? There it is. So you have S-Voice. You'll also notice in the settings, it has a separate section for voice, which is the S-Voice setting. So you'll notice that there are, it's just kind of a different thing. You can change your voice recognizer from Samsung powered by Blingo or Google. So you can change it in between uh, the Google voice recognizer and S-Voice as well. Uh, so that's kind of cool. You can change voice search as well. Uh, you can change search settings. These are all basically Google Now settings and such uh, but yeah I mean you can press and hold the home button and you will see you get that recent running apps list it's actually very smooth right there you can swipe away things that you don't want there you also see you have a trash can that uh, gets rid of all of them you also have this G and you have task manager G is Google now so you can actually press on the home button go to G and it brings up the cards from Google now you'll see the White Sox are winning one to zero all right brings up some weather as well of course you can say things that you would like to Looks like it's forced closing. I'm not exactly sure why. It just says Shell has been granted super user permissions. I don't know what's going on here. Uh, I mean, it could, it, obviously the ROM could definitely have bugs as it is just a port. So we will see if I can get this going. So let's try it again. Press and hold the home button, go to the G. Should bring up Google now. Let's try and, what's the weather like in Chicago, Illinois? It's 79 degrees and overcast in Chicago. There you go. So you got Google now working again. Just that one little bug where it did force close on me. Not too big of a deal um, in my opinion. Again, this is just a port, but it's nice that uh, with the Jelly Bean update to the Galaxy S3, you will get Google now. Uh, so that's something nice because obviously everyone does like Google now and that new Google search. Uh, that you do have. You have a cool, I don't know if this is T-Mobile specific, but I did notice a widget, uh, a cool dialer widget. So, so if you want to make a call, uh, let's say I want to call 888-546-0314 and hit the dial button. It should make the call for you. And there you go. So it's making a call. Obviously calls do work on this port. Again, I just mentioned all the bugs that things that didn't work. Um, but yeah, so the call worked great. Again, that was the incoming call screen. So you can do that straight from a widget, which is really neat. Unfortunately, with the stock touch was launcher, you still can't drag and drop applications on one another. You have to come up here and hit create folder, which isn't too bad. You also notice, I, I remembered that uh, when you press and held an icon, the garbage can would be where the app drawer was, but instead it's up here now. So just a little bit different. Again, I don't know if that's T-Mobile specific or if it's going to be on other carriers as well. It obviously depends on what Samsung decides to do and what the uh, various carriers would like out of Samsung as well. That's just about it for changes though that I have seen myself. Uh, basically I tried to look through and find as many as possible. Again, the browser um, is a little bit buggy so kind of keep that in mind. So if I wanted to load up acsyndicate.net, you'll see you got a back uh, and forward button up there. Again, you can open up new tabs. You can open up an incognito tab, but the browser does seem to be working fine. But um, Min did mention that it is uh, finicky as well. So kind of keep that in mind, you might want to try uh, Google Chrome or Dolphin browser or something like that if uh, you have a poor experience with the stock browser But uh, yeah, I mean it seems to load up the pages fast and uh, you can scroll through and such quick uh, another quick note uh, Remember the uh, S voice little hack where you kind of want to change things So what you can do is actually go into settings and then you want to uncheck launch S voice by double pressing the home key if that's something you don't use because doing that is actually going to allow the home button to respond faster. So you'll see when you go into applications like the browser and press the home button it will respond a little bit quicker. It is, it is noticeable so that's just something to keep in mind. I did do a video on that earlier but uh, that's just something I wanted to uh, reiterate and uh, mention to you guys. Other than that, that's just about everything I did want to cover. You will see super user in your app drawer. It is pre-rooted. So, uh, yeah, just a quick little uh, update and preview of the stock TouchWiz Jelly Bean ROM on the Galaxy S3. You'll have to let me know what you think. Be sure to leave a comment. Be sure to subscribe as well. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Google+. All links will be in the description of the video below. And as always, thanks for watching. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up.